Hey guys, just going to do a quick little video of this uh, guitar link to help uh, David O get it hooked up to uh, Reaper. Uh, you've probably seen them all over, little Behringer devices, fairly cheap. I think they're less than $40. Um, come with the link itself, which is right there. Uh, it's some modeling software. Um, that's headphone volume for your uh, monitoring there's a high and low level input there um, basically you know high output uh, pickups you'd put it on low it's just like a pad switch I guess on a, on a regular uh, interface you know, guitar lead headphone cables um, it comes with this guitar combos modeling software native interest instruments um, it's got like a Fender style, a Plex, uh, Plexi Marshall style, and a Vox. You, you get one. Um, you, you've got a serial number in it, and you, you can you can do one. I'll just use it in the demo because that's what it comes with. But there's Amplitude Three free, um, and there's the Shred that somebody had posted too. That's uh, quite a good uh, thing. But anyways, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show you how to get it to to work into Reaper. Uh, I'll use some screen capture software as well just to help out okay okay guys now we've got the drivers installed I think uh, David's got up to that point um, pretty simple put the CD in run the uh, setup program it'll tell you when you can plug the uh, device in so now you got your headphones in the in the interface you got your guitar plugged into the interface so now you get up to your main Reaper screen First thing you want to do, you want to go to Options, Preferences. First thing that lights up for me, there's actually a few above that, is, is Audio Device. If, it, if it, yours doesn't go to there, bring it to there. This is how it should be set up. There's, there's several options here. You want to make sure it's ASIO for the driver. If you have other devices, like I have a Mustang amp, you'll have more in the drop-down menu. Bring up the one you, you need. In this case, it's the Behringer. Inputs and outputs, you've only got two in, two out. It's basically left and right for one channel, so there's no other way to, to uh, confuse that. Um, this sample rate, 44100, it's always the same. 256, block size, always the same. Over here, same thing. Everything there is default. You don't have to change it. Only know what they should be case something changed but you shouldn't have to do anything like that okay so at this point we can close that we know we're set up properly so we'll add a new track here okay so now you'll never hear anything until the the track is armed so we'll arm the track and you'll see you'll see I've got an input but I don't hear anything yet um, by the way, there's there's an input box here, mono or stereo. Um, some Amplitude 3 will, will give me stereo tracks, where this one will only give me one, so it doesn't really matter where this one is. Um, so we'll just use that. So the next step you have to do to get sound so you can hear is turn the record monitoring on. Now what I'm hearing, I've got headphones on, um, I'll try and record this later. I'm hearing exactly what I'm playing under the guitar, dry, 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 no, no effects, no, no amps, no nothing. Okay, so at this point, you want to add some modeling to this, to get whatever tone for whatever song you're about to play. So you click on the effects button, this opens up what effects to do. You click on VST. Um, I've got Amplitude 3, Guitar Rig 5, uh, Shred is a free one. I've installed the Plexi Combo here, which is um, one of the three that come with the Behringer interface. It comes with a Plexi Combo, a Twanger Combo, which is Fender modeling, and a Vox Combo. Um, it gives you a license number you can use one of them. Uh, keep in mind though Amplitude 3 now has a free version as well that gives you some nice amps. 
So anyways, we'll open this one just because it's free and that's what comes with this interface. I'll just run the demo. So, now we've got a list of presets built in. Let's just find a good one here. Okay, this is a good one. There's going to be a lots of noise on the uh, on the recording because I'm uh, it's a single coil and I'm sitting under a bunch of lights. So, okay, we can hide this. We can hide this. So now we're ready to go. Hit record. Okay, so we've played a little bit, uh, just like everything else. If you want to save it or you know take one, take two, whatever you want to call it, you can rename it. It, it'll automatically give it the date, the track number. So we'll just leave that as as that is right now. Uh, save all. Okay, so this track now. If you were to send this track to somebody, it would be dry. It would. Um, it, would, it wouldn't have the effect on it. So what I normally do is if I had to send this to somebody to use in, in a thing, you basically go down, render it, render it as a wave. Uh, we'll call this uh, interface test, and we'll render the file. I've already done that once, so I'll overwrite. So basically there, there is your completed file. You can now send that off to whoever, and you'll hear it. Um, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll dub in what it sounds like right now uh, so you can tell what it what it would sound like to the to the person that's going to get the file and use it anyways hope that helps I tried to do it right from step one basically you know, right from from the from the start to the finish, um, it took me a little while to get it going at first. Um, but uh, say once you follow these little steps and you make sure, you know, you, you get to the point sometimes where you change a bunch of settings and you you kind of actually mess yourself up a bit. So hopefully this helps.